doctor in an acute state of anxiety. Doctor, he said, you have to help me. I'm dying. Everywhere I touch, it hurts. I touch my head, and it hurts. I touch my leg, and it hurts. I touch my stomach, and it hurts. I touch my chest, and it hurts. You have to help me, Doc. Everything hurts. The doctor gave him a complete examination. Mr. Smith, he said, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is you are not dying. The bad news is you have a broken finger. <laughs> Ours is a culture that is screaming for a lot more discernment. People need to have a better understanding of what to do and what not to do. People are capable of some acts that really lack in wisdom and common sense. Consider the following warnings that were found on consumer products. On a Duraflame fireplace log, it said, caution, risk of fire. <laughs> on a Batman costume, it said, warning, cape does not enable user to fly. <laughs> On a bottle of hair coloring, it said, do not use as an ice cream topping. What? <laughs> On a cardboard uh, sunshield for a car, it said, do not drive with sunshield in place. <laughs> and of course, it says, on a, on a portable stroller, it says, caution, remove infant before folding up for storage. That fact that the last one was needed might make you fear for the future of humanity, in virtually every aspect of life, there is good and bad. The same is true with the teaching that we take in. There is good and bad, there is true and false. And you have to discern which is which. It was a constant battle in the New Testament for the apostles to combat false teaching. We'll see another example of this in 1 John chapter 4. We're continuing in our series on 1 John, and we are back uh, in 1 John. We're looking at chapter 4 today. We've talked about walking with the God of light. Now we are in a section in which we learn about how to respond to that God of light, the God who loves us. Not all teaching is equal. You have to discern what is true and what is false. Responding to the God of light means responding with discernment. Responding to the God of light means responding with discernment. Let's take a look together at 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Let's read together. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. Guys, the view of Jesus is a critical test of the authenticity of teaching. The view of Jesus is a critical test of the authenticity of teaching. What does a person say about Jesus? Do they say that he's the Son of God? Do they say that he was the perfect sacrifice? A few days ago, I heard about a CNN anchor who made this statement, Jesus Christ, if you believe in, if that's who you believe in, Jesus Christ, admittedly, was not perfect when he was here on this earth. A CNN news anchor said that. Of course, he did not provide any examples of what he was talking about, because he couldn't. That was a false statement that he made. If you were to look at the, the New Testament Gospels, the most reliable sources about Jesus' life, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you were to try to comb through those words to find something that Jesus did wrong, 
You wouldn't find it. But he didn't say that. False teaching is a constant battle. It was in biblical times. It is today. One commenter had this to say about the false teaching that John encountered. The Bible's view of human nature differs from that of Greek philosophy in, this, in that scripture says the physical and spiritual nature of, man, of humankind was originally good. By contrast, philosophers such as Plato saw a dualism or dichotomy in humanity. Such thinking eventually produced a theory that the body, the physical, was bad, but a person's spirit was good. This teaching influenced groups such as the Gnostics, who believed the physical world was mistakenly created by a demigod, and the Gnostics opposed the doctrine of Christ's incarnation because they believed God would never take on a physical form since the body was evil. That's why it's critical when you go back and you look at 1 John chapter 4. It says, every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. He was speaking directly to this false teaching, this idea that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. The Gnostics opposed the doctrine of Christ's incarnation because they believed God would never take on a physical form since the body was evil. The Apostle John encountered a form of this teaching in his day and warned against it. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Further, the Gnostics taught that it did not matter what a person did in his body since the spirit was all that mattered. The Platonic dualism had the same effect back in the first century as it does today. It leads either to asceticism or licentiousness, both of which the Bible condemns. So contrary to Greek thought, the Bible says that humanity's nature, both the physical and the spiritual, were good, yet both were adversely affected by sin. So there was a false teaching going around that Jesus did not really come in the flesh because in the mind of those false teachers, God would not take on physical form because the body was evil. A man from Scotland shared this illustration. When is red snapper not red snapper? When a DNA test declares it otherwise. Species of fish like sheep shed Corgis and grunts are similar to red snapper, but less desirable, and therefore less expensive. Students in the University of North Carolina accidentally discovered these second-class fish while doing DNA analysis on what the package said was red snapper. In addition to their course on recognizing the DNA patterns of certain types of fish, the students received a bonus, label, uh, a bonus lesson on mislabeling fish for profit. The local fishmonger had dressed up a grunt to look like Snapper, slapped a label on it, and raised the price. These tricks aren't new. During the years that I lived in an Oceanside community, this is the person that's sharing the story, I learned some of the code words for seafood variants. The skate is a bottom-feeding fish with human-shaped lips, and it looked like a stingray. They are about the size and shape of a garbage can lid. When I hauled in my first one, it was very disquieting until I was able to identify it. Later, I discovered that the meat from the skate's stingray-like wings is often sold as scallops or clam strips. It tastes fine, but it's not what the customer believes he or she is paying for. Consumer advocate Tim Duffy described finding some Atlantic cod labeled as a product of China. I wasn't great at geography, he says, but I don't think the Atlantic Ocean goes to China. <laughs> While some misidentifications could be honest mistakes, there is a great financial incentive to make the switch. Duffy says 
the profits in mislabeling fish can equal or exceed those of drug dealing. When the Apostle John reminds us to test the spirits, it is a reminder not to take things at face value. There are false prophets masquerading as true ones, and greed is often the motivating factor. Just because the label says it is, doesn't make it so. We've got to watch out for false teaching. Take a look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? John Anderer shared results from a study in an article he wrote. This is what he said. Fair or not, young adults have become a scapegoat of sorts for a myriad of societal problems and changes. What seems to be lost in the conversation is the effect this is having on many millennials' mental health and self-confidence. Now a new survey consisting of 2,000 millennials, uh, ages 22 to 38, have revealed some troubling statistics regarding how young adults see themselves. An astounding 80% believe they are not good enough in virtually all areas of their lives. Furthermore, 75% of the survey's respondents admit that they constantly feel overwhelmed by pressure to succeed in their careers, find a meaningful romantic relationship, meet others' expectations, and maintain a presence on social media. In all, 80% of those respondents even say that these worries have negatively impacted their sleep and admit that their overall mental health has suffered. So where is all this pressure coming from? 25% of respondents say their number one source of pressure is their parents, followed by 20% of the respondents saying social media. 17% say their peers and their friends cause them the most pressure. A lot of pressure also comes directly from within, though, with about 50% saying they routinely place an unfair amount of pressure on themselves to succeed. Have you ever felt that way about your faith? That you weren't good enough? Remember when it comes to your salvation? When it comes to the specific subject that John is addressing here, discerning false teaching, Remember, it is not about you. It's not about you being good enough. It is about God being good enough. Greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is about him being good enough. We go back to 1 John chapter 4, and we take a look at verse 5. It says, they are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. People on the side of God will listen to the teaching of the apostles. People on the side of God will listen to the teaching of the apostles. It was critical that John's audience was listening to the right sources of information, the apostles. For, it is, uh, for us, it is critical that we are listening to what they left for us, the New Testament. Ruth Van Recken said, Our human reasoning alone isn't enough to discern truth from error. The best protection against deception is to know God's revealed truth, the Bible. You've got to know this book. You've got to be reading it on a regular basis. The more time you spend with this, 
the more able you're going to be to discern truth from falsehood. We just uh, had something the other day at work at the bank where uh, counterfeit bills were detected, and uh, one of the tellers brought it into my office to show me this uh, fake $50 bill that he had found. And I recounted for him a, a story I had heard a long time ago that I've shared with many of you, which is that an expert uh, in counterfeit currency was, was asked one time, what was the best way to determine uh, fake currency, to find uh, fake currency, to be able to recognize it? And he said simply to spend more time with authentic bills, to spend, spend more time looking at real bills and real money. And, and that teller had uh, been able to recognize immediately looking at that $50 bill, he could tell there was a difference in the size. It didn't look right. It didn't feel right to him. And the reason that he was able to recognize that was because he spent so much time counting real money. And because of that, because he spent so much time with authentic money, he was able to detect the counterfeit money. Guys, the same is true for us spiritually. The more time we spend with authentic teaching, the more time we spend looking at the genuine, real teaching about God, the more we will be able to detect false teaching. Chuck Swindoll put it like this, discernment plays a vital role in surviving the spiritually treacherous times we live in. We must continue to value and embrace historical roots and doctrinal truths. Times will change, but not truth. Methods will change, but not history. Each generation of believers has the serious responsibility to anchor its beliefs anew in the unchanging doctrines laid out in the scriptures. People on the side of God will listen to the teaching of the apostles. I heard about a woman named Kaylee Wilkes. She was proud of her little succulent plant. But just when she was ready to take the next step in caring for it, she realized her efforts were all for naught. Wilkes said, I was so proud of this plant. It was full, beautiful coloring, just an overall perfect plant. I had a watering plan for it. If someone else tried to water my succulent, I would get so defensive because I just wanted to keep good care of it. I absolutely loved my succulent. When Wilkes decided it was ready to be transplanted into a larger vase, she was shocked to find that the plant was plastic. <laughs> I put so much love into this plant. I washed its leaves. I tried my hardest to keep it looking its best, and it's completely plastic. How did I not know this? I pulled it from the container it's sitting on styrofoam with sand glued to the top. Apparently, the plant's inability to soak up water never clued in Wilkes about the nature of her plant because real succulents don't require much water. She since replaced the plant with several real succulents purchased at a local home improvement chain store. With discernment, you will be able to tell the difference between what's fake and what's real. Responding to the God of life means responding with discernment. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you for the words of Scripture that you give us and the words of Scripture we were able to read this morning. Lord, we pray for your help because we know on our own it can be so difficult to tell the difference between what's fake and what's real. But we know that when you are in us, we know that all things are possible for you. And we know that we are relying on your strength, on your ability to teach us and to help us to discern right from wrong. And so, Lord, that is my prayer for each one of us that uh, has heard this message this morning. I pray that you would give us a spirit of discernment. Help us to understand right from wrong. Help us to know what is good and what is bad. Help us to know what is fake and what is real. 
God, we thank you for your constant provision and protection. Lord, we thank you that you have overcome the world. And because you have done this, you give us the opportunity to share in your victory. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.